We've looked at a lot of airplane accidents on this channel. Aviation history goes back a long time, and even though we've made over 100 videos, flying by plane is incredibly safe at the end of the day. There is an old saying that every plane crash makes flying safer, or something along those lines, and airplane pilots are on the front line of that safety. Their years of training in the presence of instructors and simulators have had them preparing for scenarios that they may never actually ever face when inside a real cockpit. Even commercial pilots who fly as their day job are unlikely to be faced with a potentially fatal incident. Which is why the story of one pilot is so interesting. Today's video takes us to Germany or more specifically, West Germany as it was known at the time. The city of Cologne is located in one of the more westerly regions of the country. There, a small Cessna Citation corporate jet was preparing to make a short flight up to Lübeck in the northern region of Schleswig-Holstein. I hope I have the right pronunciation of that, I have to say it multiple more times in this video. The Cessna Citation is a family and range of aircraft that date back to the 1970s. Their small, sleek design and long range made them ideal for the corporate jet market. Over the decades, these small jets have carried millions of people all over the world, with over 8,000 total units sold. A number of these planes ended up in the hands of small charter or air taxi operators. German carrier Travel Airflug was one of those. They operated this particular citation, a first generation of the type registered as Delta India Alpha Echo Charlie. On May 31st, 1987, Travel Air was brought into Cologne to fly a VIP and his personal security guard back to their home in Lübeck. The person in question was a rather high-profile German political figure, 43-year-old politician Uwe Barschel. Barschel, who aligned with the Christian Democratic Union Party, or CDU, was the Minister-President of the state of Schleswig-Holstein, Minister-President being perhaps a comparable role to state governor in the United States. Election season was just around the corner, and Barschel's hopes of being re-elected weren't looking good. He made the trip to Cologne to meet with other CDU leaders in the run-up to the launch of his re-election campaign. On that evening, which was May 31st, 1987, he would return home. He boarded this Cessna Citation jet along with his own personal security guard. It would be just the two of them and the two pilots on board the plane. The Citation requires two pilots to fly. The commander and the one at the flight controls was a man by the name of Captain Michael Heiss. He was joined on the flight deck by his co-pilot, 48-year-old woman Elizabeth Frisk. Now for those in the audience who've been a long-time viewer of Disaster Breakdown, some of you may be thinking that this name sounds a bit familiar. Indeed, Elizabeth Frisk has a bit of a history. In 1971, 16 years prior, Elizabeth Frisk worked for an airline called Pan International. On September 6th of that year, she was first officer on board Pan International Flight 112 a BAC-111 passenger plane that crashed shortly after departure from Hamburg. The two pilots, including Frisk, made a forced landing onto a highway. The plane hit an overpass on landing and exploded, killing 22 people. Incredibly, there were 99 survivors in that accident. Co-pilot Elizabeth Frisk was among them. If you'd like to know more about that accident, consider watching our video on it. Needless to say that despite that horrific accident, Frisk continued to fly as it was her lifelong passion, where she eventually landed the job flying corporate jets for Travel Air. It really goes without saying that it's already rare for a pilot to be involved in a major air accident, but for it to happen twice is just extremely unfortunate. But her story does go much deeper than that. As some viewers pointed out in the Pan International video, Elizabeth Frisk was a rare person in that she was a woman in a field that was overwhelmingly dominated by and often seen as the domain of men, especially at that time in 1971. And that's true. In fact, 
Elizabeth Frisk holds a rather historic position in German aviation. She was the first German woman to ever pilot a commercial passenger plane. The evening of May 31st, 1987, would be her final flight. The Cessna Citation left Cologne in the evening with four people on board. They were expected to land in Lübeck at 11 p.m. For now, let's take a closer look at Lübeck Airport. The airport at Lübeck is very small. It has a single runway marked runway 0725. The airport has a small apron and serves just a handful of flights. Today, the airport comes with all the modern features you'd expect from the modern airport, including instrument approach capabilities. In 1987 though, the equipment at the airport was limited. There was no ILS. What the airport had instead, and what the pilots might have used, was a rather antiquated piece of technology known as a non-directional beacon, or NDB. They placed this beacon short of runway 07, and it is still there to this day. Non-directional beacons are very basic pieces of radio technology in terms of aviation. They exist in the form of masts which broadcast a signal on a relatively low radio frequency. They can be picked up from a rather long range, much further than say a VOR, as the signal from an NDB mast travels over the curvature of the Earth. Pilots can tune into that same signal on their radios, which can be connected to another piece of equipment in the cockpit called the Automatic Direction Finder, or ADF. With that, pilots can be pointed in the direction of that radio signal. Each NDB gives off an identifying Morse code audible in the cockpit. Despite the poor weather over northern Germany at the time, the pilots felt competent enough to handle the non-precision approach. Indeed, they configured their aircraft for landing as normal. Without any advanced instrument approach options to assist them, such as say a glide slope, the pilots needed to visually spot the airport before they could come in for a landing. With the aid of the ADF, the pilots were able to find the airport and line up with the runway. Once the airport would come into view, they could land the plane. As the weather was not great that evening, visibility was limited somewhat. The NDB transmitter at Lübeck though, is positioned just a few hundred meters short of runway 07, meaning the airport would come into view before they'd reach this point. The pilots would fly over it just before landing. What the pilots perhaps could not have expected was for this standard piece of radio equipment to become an obstacle. You see, it does tower above the ground at a height of 16 meters. Given how this accident transpired, one must logically assume that this Cessna Citation jet dropped well below where it should have been in terms of altitude. Just a few hundred meters out from the safety of Lubeck's runway, the airport came into view. The pilots commented that the airport was in sight, and those would be the final words spoken on the flight deck of the ill-fated plane. The left wing struck the NDB mast. In a matter of seconds, the Cessna Citation caught fire, crashed onto the grassy field short of the runway and careened to a halt, engulfed in flames. In the initial crash, the cockpit section was crushed, killing the two pilots inside immediately. Captain Michael Heiss and First Officer Elizabeth Frisk are dead. The two other occupants survived the initial crash. Politician Uwe Barschel managed to escape the plane and survived. His security guard, however, was severely injured and was taken to hospital, where he later died. Uwe Barschel was the sole survivor of the crash. Of course, following the crash, given how high-profile one of the passengers was on board the aircraft, speculations about sabotage and assassination began to spread. This was not a deliberate act. This crash was an accident, labelled as a case of controlled flight into terrain by investigators. Later that year, Uwe Barschel and the CDU lost their majority in the regional government in Schleswig-Holstein in September of 1987. The state flipped to the SPD, and there was much controversy regarding Barschel's actions and supposed attempt to undermine the election. 
a political scandal had unfolded where he was accused of paying the media to run a smear campaign against his opponents. Ultimately, the CDU came second in the polling. And to close things up with this story, on October 11th, 1987, just weeks later, Barshall was found dead. There are numerous theories surrounding his untimely death, including the prospect that he was murdered. Many sources, however, point to his cause of death being an overdose of drugs. All of this occurred just a matter of months after the crash in Lübeck. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it to be interesting, be sure to be subscribed as there is always a new video every Saturday. I know it was a shorter one this week, but I always wanted to go back and revisit the unfortunate events that led to the first officer's death. So this was a video I've had in the back of my head for a good long while now. Anyway, do I have a video coming for you next Saturday? I'm not going to reveal too much, but it's really shaping up to be something rather special. And we go back to a country we don't really ever talk about in these videos. So it's going to be very interesting. It, there's a lot to it. It's just generally a really nice looking video too. I got the flight simulator all tweaked out and it's going to be looking really great. I can't wait for you to see it, hopefully next week. If I need to push it back, I'll let you know, probably via the community tab. It is, though, that time of the week to take a moment to thank my amazing patrons over on Patreon for their incredible ongoing support. Their names are scrolling on the screen right now, so if you see your name here, a massive thanks to you. If you yourself want to support the channel further, you can join the Disaster Breakdown Patreon from just £1 per month, and the link to that will be in the pinned comment below. All patrons get early access to all new content two days before it goes out publicly on YouTube. If you are a patron and you want to connect with me, feel free to message me on there. That is it from me this week. If you do want to follow my personal Twitter page, that too will be linked in the pinned comment. Have a great weekend and I will see you next week. Goodbye.